Okay, you said that um, um, if you said that you know you have the, your own concept of God, and then your own concept of God, you get that you've got attributes that uh, are referred to by you from the Quran. What about the religions that are not having references, like the African religions? Do you think that, that they are in the right direction? Secondly, shall uh, we have one at a time? One question at a time. Will I allow you the second question? To make me, no, no. Stay you can stay <laughs> you, Just stay You can come back here. again behind the queue. You can ask the second question. We'll give you that right. But let me answer the first. First, I will answer that first. Yes. The, the, my son is asking, what about the African religions? I says, you know, actually the African religions is no different from Islam. Well, the concept. I'm talking about the concept. I'm asking an old Zulu. This umvelingangi. For God Almighty, this umvelingangi. Unkulunkulu means the greatest of the greatest, not a name. Unkulunkulu means the biggest of the biggest. The mightiest of the mighty is not a name. The name for God Almighty among the Zulus is umvelingangi. So I'm asking an old Zulu, what is umvelingangi? So he tells me, we are now he is a pure and holy spirit. A gazalian, he footy a gazalwanga. He does not beget and is not begotten. Footy a gugulutolo fananae. I said, have you been reading the Quran? So what's that? No, no, he never heard the Quran. He never heard the name Quran. But he's giving me what I gave you from Surah Ikhlas. He's giving me the translation of Surah Ikhlas in his language. He's a Muslim. I go to the Sudan. I learned the language of the Dinka before going. Amazing thing, you know. The Sudanese people don't know the language of the Dinka. Like we here, you live among the Zulus and you don't know Zulu. You should be ashamed of ourselves, I tell you. You live among the Zulus, you do business with the Zulus and you don't know Zulu, there's something wrong with you. I go to Sudan on a lecture tour and before going I learned the language of the Dinka. John Garang and the Sudanese Muslims are at war. It's going on for years now. So I learned the language of the Dinka. And now I want to practice. As soon as I land there in Khartoum, at the hotel, I go to the reception and say, you know, I was trying to learn your language. No, that's a hobby with me. No, it's a hobby with me. I learn different languages. I can give you 20 different languages now standing here. 20 different languages. Besides Zulu and Afrikaans. 20 different languages. Swahili, French, Spanish, Indonesian, Malaysian. Come on, man, talk. What language? Hebrew, what language you want to hear? <laughs> That's a hobby with me. So whenever I go to a new country, I learn the language of the people. So I learn the Dinka language. So I go to these guys and I say, you know, I learned your language. I said, yes. I said, listen, see if I'm doing all right. I said, apiata batin, we yaki lik eat, apiati nunu kwik, tijal an, nasha jil, kedu jil ashibu inunu kwik, kunalar, hikabatuj, inunu kwik. He said, no, that's my, not, not my language. That's the language of that guy, the Dinka. <laughs> that, uh, uh, the porter, the porter. He was standing there tall, African. This is the language of that guy there. So I go to him. I said, you know, I come from South Africa and I learned your language. I said, I want you to hear. And you know, I want you to help me. If I'm murdering your language, forgive me, it's not intentional. So I rattled it off. He says, very good. He said, where you learn this from? I said, I learned it from the Holy Bible. I said, hey, tell me now, before the white bus came here to your country, did you people know anything about God? I said, yes. I said, did you make a statue of your God? He says, no. I said, could you not people out of a wood carve out the shape of a man or an animal, lion or a donkey? He said, yes, yes. Or out of clay, could you not make the shape of a man or a woman? He said, yes. So why didn't you make a statue of your God? He says, how, sir? How can you make a statue of God? He is Nihalik. I says, what is Nihalik? What is Nihalik? In your language, he said, it means light. How can you make a statue of light? You know what he's telling me? He's telling me, Allah nur samawati wal ard. Allah is the light of the heavens and the earth. He's telling me in his own language that he is light. How can you make a statue of light? I say, he's a Muslim. And we say, he's a kafir. No, no, it's a sickness, man. Learn to find common grounds. Talk to the people, man. What is this concept? And you find that he's talking what you want to tell him. He's telling you, Allah nur samawati wal ard. We should have gone and told him that that is what the Quran says. That he is the light of the heavens and the earth. The Nihalik in his language is nur. I says, you see, there is 
the African, to me, the African, almost every tribe that I know, south of the Zambezi, not a single tribe made images of their gods. Not a single tribe, as such, they were better than the Jews. The Jews, after hundreds of prophets coming to them, they were warned again and again that thy God is a jealous God. He shall have no other gods before him, not even the likeness of the things on earth, or in the heavens above, or in the waters beneath the sea. For he says, my name is, I am a jealous God. I shall have no other God before me. Yet they made the golden calf. The Jews. The Africans, they made no images, no statues of their gods. They are nearer to, the, to Islam than any other people, Allah. But I don't know, we are so blind, we can't see it. Talk to them, man, talk to them. Show the common grounds. That this is the same, we want you to go back to the same concept that you had before the white bass came, before he twisted your brains. Go back, and by going back, you're going forward. لو كان فيهما آلهة إلا الله لفسدتا فسبحان الله رب العرش عما يصفون